Hi everyone, it's Hatsi and welcome to the walkthrough tour of Strange Street. So I have to apologise because it's been so long since I did the speed build and introduced you to the people that were building this collab. It has, it's been ages, it's been like a couple of weeks at least, but I've just had so much on and also I've had a really bad fever or flu or cold, I don't really know what you call it, but I did lose my voice and it hasn't fully come back yet, it's still like really croaky. But at least it sounds a little bit better and I am definitely feeling up for showing you these beautiful houses because honestly everybody's done so well and I'm so happy with how this has turned out. So we're going to have it on pause mode and the reason is because I've had so much trouble with this plot already. <laughs> so for starters I moved a family in and they started clearing up all the cupcakes outside my plot which has actually resulted in death for the mum of the family so apologies to her. But I absolutely could not put up with her cleaning up the cupcakes. So <laughs> she's gone. And the Grim Reaper is somewhere, I guess, like in one of these builds. But we'll find out. We'll probably see him in a bit. It'll be pretty interesting to see which one he's gone to. Because I guess he has a preference. I'm not sure. So the first one we're going to individually go around is the one that I built. Which is the candy house. I'm only going to go around this very briefly. and I'm not even going to go through like the front door or anything. I'm just going to show you like the house inside. Just so you can see it from this angle because we built it together. If we've been here from when I built it, then you'll know what it looks like more or less. And it's pretty plain. And you will probably notice that some things have disappeared as well, like this one cupcake. I don't even know where that went. But also some things like pictures and um, these lights. I didn't put them in, but sometimes that happens, like especially if somebody in the collab doesn't have the same packs as I do, it will mean that the stuff will be replaced. So some stuff has been replaced, but I've just tried to um unreplace it <laughs> and try and get it back to the way it was so some rubbish over here that's rubbish that i put out though because i was just sick and tired of seeing like piles of rubbish outside so if you do make a candy house yourself just bear in mind that the sims will clean stuff up it won't smell that is a question that i got but yeah just bear in mind that so to put like a fence there across would be really good instead of just having those open cakes yeah so that would solve the problem also removed the door here because didn't want this guy getting out cleaning up stuff again. <laughs> so he's locked in for the moment and going up to the bedroom, I'm not really keen on the roof actually now I'm looking at it, but you know, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. I created it for a bit of fun, not for practicality. So I'm happy with it. Okay, going on to the next one, which is the Madhouse and the Madhouse was made by Dixie. So just to bear in mind, all the YouTube links for all these creators will be in the description below if you want to go and see them. So going into the entrance of the madhouse, this is going to go really slowly. <laughs> but we have one of the Sims already in here, but just ignore him because he is a bit of an idiot cleaning up stuff. What can I say about him? One of the first things that I noticed was this really cool jail-like fence instead of a wall. How creative is this though? So it just adds so much more room to like... I guess the hallway. I love it. I absolutely love it. I would have never thought of doing that. So no, I'm really happy with that. And also we have some like crooked cabinets, crooked library bookcases, bookcases. That's what I'm going for. Um, some fallen pictures, which is a really creative idea because it's supposed to be mad. I can see why it's mad. And a very scary looking door. So to go into the first room, this is creepy. Like, look at that though. Oh my goodness. And they've just gone to so much effort to create a real atmosphere in here, which I love. I absolutely love it. Just the amount of like BB show hidden objects, objects used is just, it's really impressive. So I like it. It reminds me of like a police office almost. And that's pretty creepy because it's like an abandoned one. So yeah, it looks really good. Okay, so going downstairs, I think, yeah, we'll come back to the garden in a second. So going downstairs to the basement, just because we're there already. Oh my gosh, some more creepy stuff. Okay, so my favorite thing already. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay, look at this though. Okay, it's an isolation room with a bat next to it. <laughs> that is the most intimidating thing ever. I think that Marielle from Let's Play Witches could definitely take some hints and tips from this room. How creepy is this though? The drains as well. How uncomfortable would that be to sit on a chair? And like, I guess it would move about and the... Oh, I don't know. I'm thinking too heavily into that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But no, that is creepy. And a skeleton, oh my goodness. Okay, so just like so much weird stuff going on down here. I love it. I just love the randomness. And again, like just doctor stuff or like police stuff. It just, it looks like 
I guess it's like an asylum, almost. Asylum, is that the right one? Yeah, I think so. And like proper isolation cabinets, wow. So if you are doing, I guess, a really weird let's play, <laughs> you can have so much fun in this build. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna take some tips from this. There are some things that I would have never even thought of to put into this build that the creator's really gonna done. So well done, well done to Dixie who created it because it looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, so going on to the garden. So something that I noticed immediately was the amount of chairs. That's actually pretty mad though. So <laughs> I really like that. Cause you've got like how many, how many possible seats for the Sims system? We've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there's like nine possible Sims that you could have all sat down pleasantly in the garden. 10, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, so even if you can sit on the side of the fountain as well, I know you can't, okay. I thought you could sit on the side of the fountain, but apparently not. That's really cool, it's mad. So I think that it's supposed to be like that. So yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that and all those boxes outside as well just like the additional features look really good uh, something that I did have to do for this house though was I had to put in a fence at the front because there wasn't one to get into the build that may have been deleted though so I'm not too sure so going on to the third house which is the ghost house by its law pause so we have some cute little ghosts here and I just love the use of them. I think it's just a really cool idea to put them in the ghost house because you know, it's supposed to be haunted in that. So yeah, it's like very dark. I love the cobwebs used as you go through the front. It's pretty, but it's scary, which is actually very difficult to create a balance of both. Yeah, it looks good. So the first thing that I absolutely love when I go in is the fact that this area is like sectioned off. So, this reminds me of like the Von Holt estate and I think that's probably what they were going for. I just think it's such a clever thing to do and it makes me wonder like what is the mystery of this house? I'm gonna have to go and watch the speed build all the way through to see if it's mentioned just because I want to find out what that area is all about. <laughs> it looks really good. And then we've got a little dining room table here um, which is pretty difficult to fit in actually because it's quite a small plot. It's just a very small house. Okay, so going out to the garden first. The garden is nice and green, but a ghost outside, okay. It's very difficult to fit much in this space, so I like what they've done with it. And of course, topping it off with a CCTV camera to make everything look twice as scary. <laughs> Absolutely love that. Okay, so going back in the inside of the build, we're gonna go through to the kitchen. First thing I notice, there's a ghost in the sink. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. And yeah, I like how it all fits in together. The house just, I don't know, it flows all the way through. It's not like, I guess, a change of scene in each room, more or less. I just, I like it. It's consistent, you know? So it makes a really good ghost house. A little ghost peering out there. I've just noticed him actually. I'm um, just gonna see if anything is behind here. There are two really weird knights here. <laughs> and they look like they're having a conversation with themselves. So that is pretty creepy in itself. Okay, so going on to the upstairs of the build, we have some trees peeking through, which I don't know if it was purposeful, but I really like that. I think that's actually the next plot though that's done that. Yes, it is, it's the next build. So I quite like it. You know, it looks like it's sort of rotted almost and it goes really nice with those cobwebs. So I'm a definite fan. Going on to the bedroom now, I know a witch that would love to live here, and that is Agatha, oh my goodness. So, Agatha from Let's Play Witches, this would be pretty much her perfect room. It just looks like she would live here, I don't know. I just love the secrecy as well. There's this little bookcase, which is for the bathroom, so it's protected almost, and I don't know why that would be, but it's just a very mysterious bill. Maybe something terrible happened in that bathroom. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> I don't know if we will. But no, I just think it's really clever. I love what they did with the roofing as well, just the tall roofing. It just, it looks really good. It definitely stands out to me. Okay, so going on to the next build, which is the Fairy House. So Fairy House was made by Julie V Gaming and it's just really creative. I had to do some of the landscaping here. I had to redo it because some of it disappeared. Some of it was like on the road. So if you notice that it doesn't look like this in the speed build of it, then that's the reason. Just cause I had to try to do it pretty much the same as it was, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> so going on to the front, I love this doorway, it's so nice. So the inside has a green flooring, which is definitely fairy-like, it's very earthy, which I really like. And just a nice seating area and stuff here. 
Um, I like the open space as well. It's very open space in the build. I like the bright colours used as well, like um, the bright chairs. These are probably some of my favourite chairs as well. I think they're from the movie Hangout Stuff Pack and I love that stuff pack so much. We've got some bright paintings, some pretty flowers and just nice things in the kitchen. Something which is pretty interesting is the fact that a lot of these plants outside intertwine with the build itself. So the garden is probably like the most decorative I've seen so far and I'm really happy with the way that that turned out actually. Maybe it was supposed to have um, some shading down on the floor like um, terrain tools but they do delete themselves with the new glitch which came with City Living I think. So if you do download things off the Sims 4 gallery that happens. So I didn't replace that just because I haven't looked around all the builds in depth yet because I wanted to do it like on the screen just while I'm talking about it and see them for myself. So the only parts that I've redecorated or like redecorated for the people are the front bits that you can see. So I haven't done anything to do with the interiors for other people's builds or anything like that. Okay, so going on to the upstairs of the build. I really like that. They've put candles there. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's nice. Oh, that's clever. Okay, so made a hidden bedroom here. I like that because it's private. And I think that one sim, only one sim would be able to sleep here. Very pretty though. And moving on to the other rooms. So this room out here. Oh, this is a balcony. That's so pretty for Strange Street. <laughs> That's like the prettiest thing. Um, and then a little bathroom. So I like the use of candles as well because, I don't know, it just looks really natural. And these things as well, I always thought they looked natural to me. So I can definitely see why the creator used them. And just talking about the roofing as well, I just think it's really clever how they use plants instead of actual roofing. They did for this bit. But I like the merge of like using a roof and using plants. So now going on to the fourth house on the street, which is the Crooked House. And this was made by Devon Bumpkin. So I was very excited for this house because Devon makes very big creations. Just incredible. Like, oh my goodness. And I don't know. I was just really excited to see how this turned out because a Crooked House is just a very difficult thing to create. And I've got to say that this path's making me feel really nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's just like the anticipation of just like walking in. It looks it looks creepy. It does. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we walk in to an absolutely beautiful like open plan build. What is that though? Oh my gosh. They are some crazy levitational skills right there with that cupboard. I don't think it's supposed to be like that though. I think it's supposed to be a staircase. Okay, so I've just added in a staircase. It probably doesn't match very well. Actually, now I'm thinking I should have probably gone with a brown one. No, because that's black. That's fine. Okay. Looks good. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. So I love the idea of that. It would look really good with the sugar schools in as well. So if you're like a collector of those, yeah, you've got something to look forward to. Okay. Well, this is just an incredible lounge area and what he's doing with the books as well. He's too clever. He actually is. Like I would have never thought of that. Just piling up those books, but no, moving on. So we have just a really nice set of library books and this creepy portrait i like the use of that because it changes and that's the creepiest one out of all of them let me just tell you the first time i ever saw this painting move or change oh my goodness i jumped a mile so there we go some knights as well oh my gosh it's like an obsession with knights on the street but i love it though because they're so creepy i get really creeped out by knights absolutely love the fact that he used a fountain in here because it just it looks really good and it goes really nice with this house as well definitely crooked may i just add i mean just look at these zigzagged walls it just it makes it look crooked i feel like i'm in a crooked house at the moment and that's how it should feel going on to the upstairs of the build so we enter it here so the staircase okay comes up here and then you've got like another bookcase they really like books <laughs> Which, do you know what? I love using bookcases in builds. Let me just tell you, if you're creating a house and you don't know what to put in it, put bookcases in. I do it all the time and people are like, oh my gosh, you use so many bookcases. No, I think it looks really good. How good does that look though? Love the use of archways. That's really clever because it makes it look more open space than it actually is. So I like that a lot. Lots of thoughts gone into this. And it's definitely difficult to create a house with a crooked kitchen, especially because you have to use BB move objects, but he's done a really good job of this. It all fits in really well. It looks, I guess, cramped and claustrophobic, but it just looks really cozy. I also love the fact that he stayed away from using a lot of lights in the build and there's loads of candles here. I think candles look very creepy, but also pretty. So yeah, I'm happy with that. 
Oh my goodness. I hope we see that in the clown house because it's actually a clown house. So I wonder if there will be. But I like the fact that this house sort of links to the clown house in a way. There could be like a hidden story or something about the clown that lives in the clown house or something like that. So pretty interesting stuff. Oh wow. Okay, so I guess these schools have like the whole collection of them in. Maybe he got it from the debug mode, but that looks very exciting. So I think the downstairs one was probably supposed to have that now I'm looking at it, but yeah, looks really good. Okay, so I think that is the house. Let me just check if it's got an upstairs. Oh, it's got another upstairs. Okay, there was supposed to be another staircase, but that also got deleted. Okay, got it. So there was supposed to be one up here as well. Okay, so I've just moved it back. So this is how it should look. It makes a lot more sense like this. That is amazing. That's so pretty. And what I like as well, you've got the balcony of the other people down here. So... That's really clever. So going through to the bedroom, we have a very crooked room in here. Just love the placements of all the different items, just makes it look super crooked. But using worn out furniture like this set of drawers here, and that is like a homemade piece of furniture, was a really good touch on this house. So Devin has actually created a crooked house in the past. He created the one from the film. I think it's called A Series of Unfortunate Events. I don't know. It's something that my sister used to read. And I went to go and see the film with her. And there was like this really cool crooked house. It was set on the edge of a cliff or something there. Yeah, he's created it in The Sims 4 and it's amazing. So I can definitely see why he went for a crooked house. Because he's so good at it. Um, and it looks amazing. So yeah, really happy with this house and how it turned out. I just want to check that it hasn't got anything else like a basement. No. Okay, we have three more with basements. So we shall see that in a bit. Okay, so going on to the next house, which is the witch house. So this was made by Remy. So it looks pretty from the outside. And we're going to go into the build to see what it looks like. My voice is going as I'm filming. So... <laughs> Bear that in mind. If I get deeper throughout, I'm going to sound like a man by the end, honestly. Okay. So, I love the fact that it is just overpowered. How big is this, though? I wasn't expecting it to be this big inside, but she's managed to fit, like, pretty much everything in downstairs, which is really good. We've got, like, a creepy sitting area here. Seating area? Yeah, sitting area. And a dining room and a small kitchen. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't know if there's supposed to be a door here going outside. Let me just check if there's an outside of the build. No, I don't think there is. Okay, so you can't enter the outside. But, you know, you can add a door. You can exit out there if you want to do that. So, I think there is this door here, which is leading to the... Okay, so we've got the bathroom in here. I like the choice of furniture. The fact that we've got the really old bath. Because that's, like, one of my favourite baths in the game. We've got an old sink. Okay, so just added a staircase in quickly. So it's round about there, I guess. Okay, there's no room back here, but this is where the journey starts. So we've got the bedroom. We've got some like really creepy trees as well throughout. Some witchy, I guess, places to sit. Definitely looks like the sort of place that one of the witches might sit out of Let's Play Witches. So really nice area there, actually. I love the desk area. Going on to the bathroom in here. So similar to the downstairs one, actually. There are some walls that have missed the paint, but do you know, it happens. I love the fact that there's potions up here. This definitely makes it look witchy. And wine glasses as well. What about wine glasses just makes me think of witches? I don't know what it is. Pretty interesting. Love the choice of candles as well. It just makes it look so creepy. And also using some spooky stuff from the spooky stuff pack, like these little tables and it um, looks really good. Also using the enlargement sheet and putting some paintings up here. It looks really cool. It does. Because it looks like they're worshipping the ancestors, which I would imagine to be in the witch culture. Of course, there are so many different witch traditions and things. So this is the pumpkin house. This was made by Simplicity. And she decided to make it look like a pumpkin from the outside, which is a very quirky idea, I think. And it's difficult because you don't get a lot of room here. So it's very difficult to make an actual pumpkin. So I was wondering about this one because this, in my opinion, would be one of the most difficult ones to do. For me, I would find the trickiest one, probably the pumpkin house and also the werewolf house. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, where do you even start? Okay, so going on to the inside, we have some very bright pumpkin-y colours. This is amazing. Oh my goodness. And look at the bear that she used. 
the pumpkin bear. Okay, this has taken a lot of thought though, because she's really gone all out and she's added pretty much everything that would make it look like a pumpkin inside the round pumpkin table. And all the, I guess, like the doors sort of blend in as well. It's difficult to find orange furniture in The Sims 4. Everything's pretty much like a horrible grey white, like the ceiling, which we can never change in any build whatsoever. And that's what I find, like, with a lot of the items. So, yeah, absolutely well done to her, because, oh my goodness, how she's managed to make all this blend in, she's obviously very good at interiors. Okay, so going on to the first room, which is this one. Oh, wow, okay. This is really good. So we have like a pumpkin rug on the floor and love the choice of the movie hangout furniture. I think I'd actually love to see a take on the SpongeBob house if she can create something like this because this is hard. And also, that's good because it's like a pumpkin as a light. So going on to the next room, which is this one. Oh, it's the kitchen. This would be a very difficult room to create because we don't get many choices of different colors with these uh, cabinets. So going with the brown is a really good choice, actually. Okay, so we've got two staircases there. Oh, three, I think. That's pretty clever. That's some clever staircasing skills. Some pumpkins outside and also one of these really weird hairdresser poles. Are they hairdresser poles? I don't know. Going back to the inside, we're going to head upstairs. We've got a study up here. We have some more pumpkins and some more rooms. Wow, there are so many rooms in this build. Didn't realize there'd be so many. Pumpkin smashing table. I was definitely expecting one of those. That is a good choice to put one of those in. And then we're going to go and explore these two rooms in here. Oh, look at the bedroom. Okay, this is interesting. Another clown picture. That's pretty cool, actually. I like the fact that she's also mixed it with a little bit of like a, a pink color so it just looks pretty in here the next room across in here is the bathroom okay some bright colors for a change some like white i guess so there you go bathroom's pretty nice i like that very much okay just seeing if there's an upstairs at all maybe there is let's just see uh so downstairs. oh there's a downstairs so there's some cauldrons in the basement and there's also another pumpkin smashing table pumpkin smashing table or pumpkin making table so that's the house in full it's actually very big like for the space it's very good very very good because she's managed to fit a lot of stuff in there which is pretty difficult to do okay so now we are on to the clown house the clown house let me just tell you i am so excited about this build it looks so good oh my goodness the outside though okay so cutie chin is the creator of this amazing build so just the work with the eyes like how she's made a clown reminds me of american horror story freak show i don't know if anyone's watched that or like maybe a few people have but it's just really clever how you have like the house actually being the fact that you walk through the mouth of the clown so that is just really creative and i guess this is the tongue here and the teeth that is difficult to do in the sims so hats off to her very good creator okay so i did replace like some parts of the terrain here so i don't know if this bit was actually supposed to be um like sand it was originally just like a green terrain but i did that just because i didn't know whether it was supposed to be so that's replaced by me i guess so sorry if it wasn't so going on to the inside oh my goodness the inside is absolutely stunning okay so wow okay i don't even know where to start the blue and the red and the orange just wow she's made it look so good just the amazing just clashes of color using stuff from the day of the dead as well it's just very smart because it's supposed to be a clown house of course so you've got like the red the blue the yellow the signature colors of a clown i guess in the house just mix with everything else so it's actually very pretty i would live here myself actually <laughs> does that make me a clown i don't know if it does okay going on to the bathroom though wow okay this is good. This is really good. This is like decoration skills to the next level. And there's like a window here too. So you can sort of see in the bathroom. That's creepy though. So someone's going to like watch you in the bathroom. <laughs> I doubt it. But I mean, he definitely could. Look at him through there. Also, oh my gosh, yes. Clown picture. Okay. I was definitely expecting that. And a little study here. Okay. That spider's creepy. <laughs> but no, it's good. Also, the computer looks a little bit clowny, I guess. I don't know how, but it does. That's weird. Okay, so gonna go outside first just because the door's here. The garden. I love what she's doing with the fence. Got some graves as well with a little rose. Gosh, who died? That is creepy. There's a doll's head. She's like buried. Oh, there's a hammer as well. Oh, there's a note, I think. Okay. There's like a real story in this house. Did anyone else get that? I get that. I noticed it really well with the madhouse. 
And I feel like it's the same sort of thing in the clown house. Like there's a hidden story here, which I don't know, but I need to find it out. I think this is the only house with TV as well. So that's pretty cool in itself. And look at this though. Day of the Dead, little, um, what they're called. Oh my gosh, hangers? Don't even know. Okay, so going through to here, we've got a bar area looking directly outside. Okay, I just sort of saw something there. That was weird. And a bed here. Okay, so not much space there. <laughs> but I would imagine that the clown would just like pop out at people. Maybe somebody would be like lurking through his house and um, they would see that there. Okay, so I've just replaced it. There's still a little bit poking through. So I'm so sorry if that annoys anybody, which it probably will. So you can replace that if you want to. Okay, so going to these um, little weird frames over here. That's really clever though, the fact that she's done that. I never thought of doing that, you know, because I guess it's like these crazy mirrors that you see in like amusement parks where the picture changes, like the mirror changes your image. So that's really good. And the kitchen, so many knives. Wow, how many sets of knives do you need? <laughs> this is such a weird house. And you know, this is probably like the creepiest build as well because of all the clown stuff that's happening at the moment. So yeah, that is um, pretty creepy there. And another clown, wow. And these celebration things, that's clever. That is really clever. I like the fact that um, it's like a celebration corner and he's really sad. Absolutely love that to bits. Okay, so going through to this part outside, which is a balcony so we can see some stuff off here and a cute little birdhouse with the clown colors. So it was supposed to be a staircase there. I'm not gonna replace it just cause you can actually see the banister there and you can see what it would have looked like. So gonna leave that for a second, but this is the upstairs bedroom, some schools as well, sugar schools, and just some, you know, clowny objects. Maybe this was like the clown's life when he grew up, when he was happy and he's like looking over to it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking way too into this, but no, that's a really good idea. So I'm definitely happy with how that house turns out. Now moving on to the werewolf house. So the werewolf house is made by Luke the Plum Bob. So this is another very difficult house to create, but I like what he's done here. Because I feel like with a werewolf house, there's a few roads that you can go down with it. You can go down the road of creating a wolf looking house. Um, similar to how you'd see like the clown house or something like that. But the other idea that I had personally was to do like, I guess, a worn down sort of home. So it goes really nicely. Okay, so going straight into the hallway. Everything's like really closed off. Which would make sense though, because if a werewolf's going to live here, they need everything closed off so that they can hide away in the room when midnight comes. So that makes a lot of sense actually to have that. Okay, so going on to the bathroom, that's really nice. Some good interior decorating there. Because it's like purposefully old looking, but it goes really well. Also love the bath and the toilet choice. I love the fact that everyone sort of used those just because they go really well in these builds. Okay, so study. Really nice again, loads of books and things, probably like, I guess, for the werewolf to do some family research, stuff like that. And the room down here, oh my goodness, I wasn't expecting that. That just caught me off guard. <laughs> I was expecting it to be like a bathroom or something. It's like a proper hidden staircase. That's really good. Okay, so we've got some beds in here. Okay, so we've got some like knives, creepy knives. <laughs> Why would the werewolf have knives? Then we have like, I guess, a patient's bed. Oh, for holding the werewolf back. Yeah, that would make sense. Also some CCTV to keep an eye on the werewolf and some pipes. So potentially what could happen is the werewolf could tie themselves to the pipes to stop themselves from turning and hurting people. Going on to the upstairs of the build. Oh no, we're not finished downstairs. We haven't been to the kitchen yet. Okay, we've got some more rooms to go around. All right, so we're gonna slowly go into the kitchen. So the kitchen is the room with a big double doors, a real brown theme throughout, which goes really nicely with the werewolf theme, of course. So that is good. Does this room link to the other one? Let's just see. Oh, it does. Okay, so that links to the hallway. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. This is like an art studio almost. I think what I like about this area is it's really closed off. So it almost looks to me as if, if the werewolf wants to escape, like when they turn, it's gonna be really difficult to do that. So gonna explore the garden very quickly. Some very overgrown plants in here, absolutely love it. There really isn't a lot of space for this garden, <laughs> but they've done really well to do that to be fair. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go upstairs to see what we have up there. So some more closed off doors. The theme runs throughout. I'm really keen on that actually. It's a very good idea for a supernatural house. So first room, is this beautiful sort of like red 
dark room with like pumpkins and it's a little bit supernatural. I like it. I like the fact they've used this bed as well because I imagine that, you know, werewolves live a very outdoor life, so it makes sense. It looks good. Nice bathroom, matches the one downstairs, happy with that. And we've got another bedroom. It's probably like my favourite bedroom, I guess, just because I like the browns and the reds. And we've got a little seating area and I think this is like the last room. I'll check that there's nothing upstairs though. Another library. That's really good. Just checking that we've not missed anything on the upstairs. Wow. Okay. We've got like a really weird little goblin upstairs. Has he got a gun in his hand? No, he hasn't. <laughs> I thought he did for a second. I, was, I thought to myself, well, why would EA put a, a goblin with a gun? in The Sims 4, that's really weird. <laughs> but no, I love that. So I didn't even realize there was a little goblin up there, but it looks really good. So happy with how that house turned out. Now moving on to the vampire house, which was made by Coffee. So to start with, I love what she's done with the roofs, really high roofs. There's just something about high roofs I like, and it just makes me think of like vampires, because I think Count Dracula has like a very typical V-shaped hairline. So it makes me think of this house. I don't even know why. Going through to the inside, we've got like a chess table outside with these chairs. Now what worries me is if it ever rains in The Sims 4, these are gonna get damp. But no, it looks really good. I like that so much. And I love how she's done the garden. It's sort of like closed off with a nice little fountain here. And love the red as well, because I would always imagine that a vampire house would have lots of red inside, but we'll see. Yes, it does, red and black. Okay, so I like the modern approach that she's gone for, actually. I think this is like the first modern house that I've sort of seen so far. Now, this wall here may be because of the house on the other side of it. So I'm going to really quickly replace that now. Just replace that wall inside. I replaced it mainly because it was like, a big wall um, if it was just like a small wall then I wouldn't have like a bathroom wall or something I would have just probably left it but no I think it really does look nice in here and I just I love it I love this as well the fact that it's like a separation over here you've got like the place where I guess the vampires would sit down so it's very creative oh and also let me just say the fact that she's used these curtains all the way around the house to shield out the light, that's clever. That is really clever. That's like thinking ahead and trying to get into the, I guess, mindset of if a vampire lived here, how would they have the house? Because of course, vampires can't be in daylight. They would have to have protection from it. Okay, so I'm guessing one of these may be a door, I think, potentially. Yeah, that's a door. Oh, wow, that was a good guess, okay. So, going on to the hot tub outside. Wow, okay, that's nice. First hot tub as well on the plot so far. Just some more curtains and stuff. I like the fact that these vampires could maybe even sit outside, um, but be shielded from other people. That's pretty clever. Going on to the upstairs of the build, which we're just gonna go into right now. So we're gonna go to this room first, which is, oh, a bedroom. Okay, that is a nicely decorated bedroom. I love the red and black. Again, just very clever with little features like this. I've always imagined vampires to be like, romantic I guess so it goes really well I would imagine like Count Dracon or Count Dracula um to be in this room <laughs> that's just my opinion I like it so going on to this one in here this is the bathroom I like the running grand theme throughout of all these very fancy curtains and the paneling as well it just looks really good together so I'm so happy with how this house has turned out and I think I think there's supposed to be a staircase up there as well no there isn't okay but there is a little balcony that I forgot about um, leading off to this room here. So moving on to the next house, which was made by Whisker. Start off with, I absolutely love the entrance way here. So crazy with what they've done and the garden as well. It looks, it looks really good. What is that? It looks like an octopus on the front lawn. <laughs> that is really weird. Definitely an abandoned house. Um, yeah, so going on to the inside, this room is the kitchen. So the kitchen in here, just abandoned again. Like, look at those pots though. Someone just left them behind. That looks like the house that I left behind in Germany. <laughs> I did. I left my pots behind. I left everything behind. And the landlord really shouted at me when I left it as well. Okay, so going on to the other rooms. What I like as well is it's not all traditional. It looks like somebody's probably like just moved out of this and they've just left it. So that's a really nice look to it. Um, a little toilet in here, that's quite good. A storage cabinet and going onto the outside. 
Oh, that's nice. That is really good. I love the garden as well. Really difficult to fit a garden in this very small space, but they've managed to do it. They managed to do it well. Maybe there's something else that I've missed. Okay, yeah, so we've got like an open plan kitchen, the bathroom, um, a little place where there may have been a lounge, but it's been removed because it's abandoned. You know, it happens. Um, and going on to the upstairs of the build. Okay, so I know that I'm gonna like the study because I've just had a quick peek of it. Wow, what is that? I thought they were knives then, but it turns out to be an aeroplane. We've got some like mess on the floor. See, why couldn't the those sims before cleaned up that instead of cleaning up my cupcakes? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, but also we have a little letter on the side, which is creative because it takes a while to find stuff like that in um, the debugger mode. Maybe this is another balcony. Okay, it's another balcony. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay, so we've got two balconies in this build, so two outside areas. We've been in there. And then we've got this room in here. So I'm guessing that it's a children's bedroom just because of the bear. Um, it looks twice as creepy because the roof just goes straight through its head. That looks really creepy. Um, and that's not even like purposefully, but that just makes the room for me. I'm sorry, I love it. I absolutely love stuff like that. But no, very creative. Okay, so I just skipped a wall there, but round here by the staircase is the main room. Really retro. I love this. Absolutely love this. I can't remember where we got these paintings from. Maybe it was Dine Out, but that looks really good. So, love it. This room's actually pretty fashionable. So, yeah, I'm definitely happy with that. More paintings, etc. A little bathroom here, which looks really good as well. Fits in perfectly. Moving on to the last house, which has been made by Wide Joseph. So, this is an Adams family inspired house here. We're gonna go through the gates and see what is inside. Now, being honest with everybody, I have never watched The Addams Family, so I don't know like how accurate this is. I'm sure that you'll be able to tell me in the comments below. We have a pretty dining room table with a cauldron on, so I'm guessing The Addams Family, like, I know what they look like, but I don't know if they're vampires or witches. There's a walking hand as well. I mean, it's a pretty random show. I can't even remember it, um, but the kitchen, pretty creative as well. What's that? That's like a incense stick, I guess. Um, yeah, it's good. It's dark, you know, it's, um, it's creepy cobwebs as well. We've got a little office in here. I think that from remembering one of the characters, one of the characters wears like a black and white striped shirt. So that goes pretty nicely. Um, the only reason I know more or less what the characters look like is because I went on a cruise a while ago. You know the one that um, they lost my bags and they never gave them back? Yeah, that one. Um, funny story, not very. Um, but they had like this really bad show on that was on like every night of the Adams family, but we didn't understand it. But we knew what the characters more or less looked like, but it was pretty much this guy walking around with like the black and white shirt on. And he walked around with like 10 pillows underneath his shirt. He looked ridiculous. Okay, anyway, so that is how the room finished off. I like it, I really do. They've done so well with um, just incorporating all these old pictures. That one looks like uh, the, the woman in black, not the woman in black, oh, uh, the woman from Adam's family. I guess my husband will know. I'll have to ask him later. Um, but no, it just, it looks perfect. So really happy with that. Then we have a little study, wow. So I love how everybody's incorporated like studies into the builds just cause I guess studies are a little bit creepy. Makes sense, I guess. Maybe the Adams family would have liked a study in their home. I don't know. But then we're going on to the outside of the build. Wow, this is so good. That's amazing. They did this with um, one of the ornaments. We've also got some graves out here. So that's pretty interesting. Also, if you can hear dogs barking in the background, that is just my two dogs getting really impatient because they want some attention, which I'm gonna go and do in a second. So going past the kitchen and upstairs to see what is there. The bedroom up here is really good. Loads of books under the bed, a little knife down there, garden tools. I don't know what that is, but no, definitely creepy. So I wonder who would live in here. And then we've got like an upstairs lounge, which is like topsy-turvy. I guess it's because there wasn't a lot of space downstairs. Then going on to another bedroom, which is this one in here some of these beautiful paintings and pumpkin carving etc it's a little bit abandoned in here which i like with the cobwebs etc the last door on the second floor is the bathroom which is a little bit modern actually especially with this bathroom tiling all over it so quite a nice combination there and then going on to the upstairs which is the last floor of the build because like the third floor i guess 
We've got a bathroom, I like that. We've got a nice little bedroom. And we've also got, oh wow, what's that? What is that? It's like a baby room. That's pretty interesting. I didn't know there was a baby in the Adams family house. So I guess this is like the outside grave part. Oh, probably because they couldn't fit it out here. Got it, so they do it on the top of the world. That's really creative, to be fair. Also like the use of the roof up here making it into something rather than just like leaving it that's that's good yeah just really well thought out so i guess that's for the graves um love the idea of that love the idea of putting it on top of the build how creepy is that though so they've done really well everybody has it looks absolutely fantastic i'm just i'm really happy with how the streets turned out of course i'd love to know what you think of it in the comments below and if you have any other ideas for collaborations that i could do in the future then let me know